Hello, um, welcome to this new video about overset meshes. We're working for the moment with OpenFun. Next case is we're going to introduce with Fluent and we're going to compare better news. This new case, so far we have been dealing with uh, static meshes, the bodies are not moving. So now let's work with moving bodies where it seems to start to become really interesting. So this case, by the way, in the description you will find the link where to download. So this is it traditional case with that we have done where we have the cylinder and we are going to use three meshes but I'm going to introduce how to do moving meshes okay so using over, over the overset approach uh, well, no, I'm not going to run the case just to show you the mesh then you have the script ready to go there so you will see that you have you want to do just the mesh you have this script and if you want to run everything you have this one if you want to run the solver you have this one you, in this case we're going to use move dynamic meshes okay it also works with overset meshes so we can check all the kinematics here so we're using this command okay is you're going to to run later just comment this one comment this one to get the, the the results so let's see what we have so i'm going to read to generate the mesh just to see what we have so okay i know so I will use this script just to generate the image. So remember what I'm doing here, just check the script, but if I will recall, it will be cylinder to all, refinement sound to all, and everything I'm going to have it here and all. So we're going to have our final mesh here. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we visualize the mesh. So see that we have the refinement region, the cylinder, so we're going to put the cylinder into motion just to see how things work, but the rest of this setup, everything bundle conditions, it is exactly the same. Now we're adding a new functionality, which is uh, putting the bodies into motion. So let's go into the folder all where, where we're copying the module. We assemble the whole over set mesh. So remember, in the dynamic mesh dictionary here, we set up all these uh, all the dynamics dynamic meshes. So as you see here. We're using the dynamic overset mesh library. Uh, okay, so remember that this is a traditional way. You you commit this one when we're working with uh, fixed bodies. But now that we're working with moving bodies, we set up everything here, even the body, the over, the component mesh that is moving. Okay, so see that in this case we're using a multi-solid body motion solver, meaning that this one will give you capabilities to put different component meshes into motion, and then you give the coefficients okay so in this case we're putting one son so this one takes son so remember that when we do set fees we have some regions now i'm going to show you a top of sector scenario where, where we convert that region into son to have this one okay and you have access to different kinematics inside uh open fun we're going to use this simple oscillating linear motion okay so it will ask you for amplitude and omega will be in radians per second. And these are the actions that you have available. So you have these actions, let's say, that are very complete most of the time you will do since oscillating or uniform, okay, motion, linear motion, okay. But also remember you can program something and even you can do, uh, you can program uh, a motion, a kinematics, okay, in this version 1812 it is supported, it is uh, it is like code is code stream, but you can program that one. But there is one here that is really handy. This one in the next tutorial that we're going to do, uh, I'm going to show you a flapping fall. That was a subject that a long time ago I was working on that, just putting folds in flapping motion and winds. So probably that motion because we're going to put it into. E, uh, into even and pitching motion is not included into, in this one. So, tabulated 6DOF motion will let you read an input file, and in the, that, that input file basically you can put any motion you want. So, this one gives you a lot of flexibility. But remember, you can program that one, but if you, want, if you don't want to go through the whole thought and bustle of programming, just use, use this one, it's very handy. Okay, so in this case, see that we set up 
the motion. This is the region that exists. We're going to see later how to set up. And then the next step, let's take a look at the boundary condition. So see that this stuff is very standard. Okay, P, uh, P you have the strong ID, and we have U. So remember, the walls that are involved in, in that region that is moving, those walls need to be a moving wall velocity. Okay, remember that. So the cylinder, I know it is moving in that region, in that cell side. I would put moving wall velocity. So you can put here fixed value and it would run. But remember, when things are moving, you need to add to your equations the mesh the, the mesh velocity. So if you don't put fixed value, you will get you will get results, but likely probably they are not okay. So be careful. Always when you have things moving, just walls moving, put moving wall velocity. And we have point displacement, okay, which pretty much it is the same as previous cases we have done. So you have your oversight patches. Okay, so pay attention that in this one, this is how you do the definition. Instead, in the other files, you just put oversight. Okay, so this is the combination, how it is implemented. Okay, patch type, oversight type, zero rating. Okay, and then everything is uniform for uh, uniform fixed value, uniform value. So in theory also, you can put a motion here. So within that, uh, overset patch that component mesh that wall can move move inside. I have done that one, it get funky results, but I have to say that there is no, uh, I, I don't see any reason why to put also that body into motion. That's why we, we are using overset meshes just to avoid that mesh morphing. Okay, so if you put that there, we have mesh morphing. So I don't see any reason to do that, and the results are not very good. So that's all this setup, nothing else to do. Remember you have your numerics, so maybe this body, see that in the kinematics is like a large amplitude, so probably the instantaneous velocities will be really high in the first step, time step, so you will need to control that. So it's interesting that also we have access when using our set meshes or in FV solution, you have need this new in entry check mesh current number so i think i already mentioned that when bodies are moving it's a good idea that you choose a time step that will let a sequential change of cell types okay we're going to see this what i'm talking about when we run this case okay but we can check the the mesh current number which is different from the from the global current number of the flow, okay? So, because the motion, the mesh is moving, so it has a velocity, okay? And probably this will be the most restrictive one because you would like to have a mesh current number less than one, okay? So, at this point, we're ready to go, okay? I think we, we address everything. So, to, to, to run this one, you go move dynamic mesh. I don't want to use the function objects, okay? And off you go. So remember that I mentioned also when you are creating the boundary conditions and merging meshes, it's a good idea that the first patch it is the overset one. So in this case, see that the first patch is not the overset one. So we're going to have this warning here, okay? You already know how to erase this warning, okay? So we'll be Great. Adding that dummy patch, I won't do it, but you know how to, to, to deal with this warning, okay? But see that we're running, move dynamic mesh as you test your kinematics, and it will give you the quality of your mesh every single time, set, but also it will show you the the operation done during the overshed, uh, the, the, the overshed meshes, like the calculated cells, interpolated cells, whole, every, all that information is given you in time. Here, we don't see the the current the mesh current number that we need to we need to run to see that one okay so first let's check the kinematic let's see what we have okay so put it here and see this is what we have to play put in play motion and voila we have our body into motion so this is the idea of overset measure so here at this point we don't have any limitation in the motion that we did so we can put this body into very strange motion large displacement multiple bodies uh collision so far doesn't handle but some other solution handle collision elastic elastic collisions uh 
So it gives you a lot of flexibility. But what is interesting, but you see here that we're moving, but then you go outside of this refinement box. So you will be adding diffusion, you will be smearing your solution. So it would be a good idea to also put this region into motion. So let's do that. That is relatively easy. So we go back to dynamic mesh dictionary and see that we already have that definition here. So we create that zone, refinement zone. This is the name of that design. And we use the same motion and now we're going to put that region into motion. So if you have another zone, another region, another component mesh, you can put it into motion. They can be totally different uh, motion types, okay? <clears throat> so what is interesting, let me show you now how to create these cell zones. So there is this dictionary top of set, okay? So go here, top of set, moving sun, okay? So this is the one that we're using to create those zones. So remember that previously we run a check mesh and check mesh will tell you all the regions. So in part of you, you can identify the region. So I already know that region one will correspond to the region around the cylinder. So we're doing this topological uh, operation here just to select a set with this name. And what we're going to do now is convert that cell set into a sum set, okay? And the same for the region two that I know that region two will correspond to refinement sun, okay? So as you have many different sets, you can do all those operations here. So this is pretty much a very straightforward operation, okay? So let's run this case, okay? Okay, I don't need to redo the mesh, so let's do again moving. So let's clean what we have for this time minus Rn. So I erase all the time steps, and now I go move dynamic meshes. Off you go. So see that we have good mesh. All these time steps are good, no problem. Okay, so now let's see what we have. Apply. Okay, stop moving. Let me see what happened here. Okay, uh, sorry, I forgot to save this one. Okay, so don't forget to save that. Okay, let me go again. So this is ready fast. So there's no problem. Again, I go. Now we are putting the two regions into motion. Okay. And let's see the final result. So now that the oh. Uh, Refinements on that region is also moving with the cylinder, so I will guarantee that my the weight behind the cylinder will remain north if the weight stays in this region will have good quality. Okay, see, so remember that I also mentioned in the previous video that is a good idea that the transition from these cells to the other one are kind of very similar to avoid smearing solution and adding numerical diffusion. Also, here, similar things, but we're going to spend some differences here. Okay, there, but there's no problem. So again, if you want to add different motions, feel free to put whatever you want. So as you see, it's relative straightforward. So now I would like to show you the final thing. So I'm going to run a few time steps, okay? But just to check the information we have, okay? But also the mesh uh, current number, okay? So I will go to run solver. Well, actually, I don't need to do that one. I can stay here. So, phone list times minus Rn. And I will run a couple of time steps. So, remember over uh, pimple form we're using in this case. And I would like to save my log file. Okay. And I go. So, I see that I start to run in. Okay. It's giving me a warning that I have a few uh, function objects, but it's basically telling me that it's not bothering finding that patch. But you can fix that later. But see that <coughs> there's in, okay, that we see the output here, and see that somewhere here we have the mesh code number, which should be here, okay. So preview uh, before you start the pimple loop, you will have the mesh with a number, okay? So as the body is moving, okay, you have that report. So it is a quite good idea to have this mesh with a number less than one, otherwise 
you will run, but you maybe have in, encountered some problems during interpolation. So I will show you what will be those problems. Okay. So that okay is running the useful way. So I just want to show you a couple of time steps. Okay, but say so that okay it's going up and down. So you see the instant this acceleration. It is experiencing very large accelerations. So here again, you need to play with the visualization just to put the right plan plane in front. But <clears throat> let me go and follow the stands minus n, and I will do again move dynamic mesh. Okay, just to show you also how these cells are changing in time. Okay. So remember also when you see here this part view folder, usually you have a part of your files to restore in a state and I'm going to use that one to restore a specific state okay, of the visualization where we can visualize okay choose files, I choose the correspondent here. Okay, so this point I don't see anything there. Okay, maybe part of you built in. Okay, let loads that part of you. Okay, choose file. Let's see. No, okay. Okay, I don't see anything. I don't see the problem. Okay, let me open here, visualize. So, okay, we have the meshes here, so let's remember that you have that in the information available, some ID and cell type. So what I was talking, <coughs> I was talking about cell types. So remember, cell type 2 means you have a hole, cell type 1 is the interpolation fringe, okay, where you interpolate from a component mesh to the other one, and 2 is everything calculated. Okay, so let's visualize what is happening here while the mesh is moving. So I will do a co I will use a couple of filters here. So I'll press hold to separate sums. So I want sum zero. Okay, let me track now also as well. Uh, sum one. So when, okay, will be something here. I have sum one. Okay, cell types. Okay. Uh, some one you have it there and let me strap now also found two okay so one one point four we have it there the three sounds now we can put a few couplings uh, that one there do not triangulate apply Okay, so we have this coupling here, great lines. Now let's put another coupling in this one. Okay. Normal here. Triangulate. And remember, I would shift it a little bit. Okay, apply. I would shift it a little bit because I don't want that one to overlap with this one. So 0 0.5, okay. So see that now I shifted in front, and I will do the same with this one. A couple in there. Normal to this one. Uh, triangulate. Put it applied. Uh, apply. Da, 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 da. Now one here. And that you have the other one. Okay, so we have our three planes here, and I will put here wireframe and wireframe. Okay, let me show also time. Okay, to 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 annotate time filter apply. We have time there. So I don't want to see the lion. Okay, go. So see what is happening here is that this is interpolation area. We have a mesh. Okay, in the background. Okay, and then let me see, I missed something. Okay. Okay, let me see the order of what I did here. Okay, yeah, everything okay. Okay, so let me put wireframe here. 
okay so see that if I start to move this one see how it's changing okay so in this case see that from time set 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 it is advancing a lot of cells and see that it is interpolating here okay so you have the whole so you are taking information from cells that you you don't want okay so this might be a problem so this is why it's very good idea to have a low uh, mesh CFE number so this transition from one one times it to the other one the transition and the cell types is a very smooth transition okay so for instance okay show the only this one so see how this transition goes okay which probably is not ideal you are creating a lot of you are using a lot of interpolation just because you are using though that that large times so if we look at this cell also at this region so it will be constant because it's moving with the other one okay it's collinear with that one but this is a problem here in this in this one so to fix this problem what we can do is just reduce the time step and we're going to see that the chance between time step is a sequential one so let, let's do it let's run so just to avoid problems here so i will save this state so we'll run it again so just to have here in this case let's reduce go to control dictionary and let's reduce the time step and let's put time step 01 01 okay so we have a high frequency okay uh, the problem wasn't the check mesh it was like we were uh, saving the, 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 the solution with a large frequency so here in this case we're going to save with this frequency that will allow us to, to, to see the transition in the right way so for this times minus rn so let me run again this one so we're going to have more time step but a better transition from level to level from when the from time step to time step when the cell types are changing so this is the the, the extra overhead that you are adding in overset measure so every single time that you change from one time set to the other one the solver needs to recompute all these interpolations, do all these oper operations. So if we go now here, Paraphone did it. Uh, load state, we just previously save it here. Okay. So we have everything here. I guess I will need to. Okay, so surface self type. Self type. Okay. Okay, I don't see the cell type here. Okay, let me see. Okay, there is a problem. Okay, I don't know what happened with that state. So let's do it again manually. Okay, so in this case, we're only interested in and the background mesh okay we already know what happened with the other, with the other two that are moving at the same frequency so there is there is no change so let's just stress sun one okay i want sun zero sorry okay and now i want a coupling here okay no triangulation and let's visualize self type there and put the mesh surface mesh I go here and just press play see the difference with the previous one that in some points you will have in three fringe for interpolation that probably is not a good, a good idea it was moving too fast in this case we reduce the time step therefore we reduce as well the uh, mesh current number and then now we have the proper interpolation sequence you know sequential change from time step to time step to allow a uh, good interpolation, good computation of your uh, whole coding and the and the interpolation cells and everything. Okay, so this is important. Instead, you have to be careful. Okay, you might be running, but probably there will be some pro uh, some problems in, in your interpolation. So let's put here, for instance, the cylinder. So some run, put some two. 
okay okay I need to apply the filter here and I will let an ID2 apply okay and let me wireframe so I see what is happening here that now with this time step we have a sequential change from time step to time step so remember the previous one and you will see that there is a bit different now is what we want what what is the, the ideal uh, results okay so I think with this I end this tutorial the next one we're going to work again open from moving bodies will be a case related to flopping wings the interesting will be that we're not using any more block mesh now we're going to get the meshes from fluent okay we generated using ansys measure we're going to converse so well we're going to see how to do that one but pretty much we proceed in the same way and we're going to use the tabular motion so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time bye